in this lecture we are going to discuss about expansion in orthonautics why do we need expansion in orthonautics we usually know that in orthonautics we will go for expansion to correct a cross bite now what is cross bite nothing but uh, when we have a narrow maxillary arch the mandibular posteriors will overlap the mandibular posteriors this is called as cross bite that is in a cross bite there is a loss of coordination between maxillary and mandibular dental arches so in order to coordinate the maxillary dental arch with the mandibular dental arch we will go for expansion in orthodontics now in the process of expansion even apart from correcting the cross bite we also obtain some amount of space due to increase in the arch perimeter and the space thus obtained can be utilized for correction of crowdings that can be seen in dental arches so we will usually go for expansion in orthodontics to coordinate the maxillary and mandibular jaw bases and their dentition the extraction was first introduced by emerson c angel angel in 1860 in san francisco when we look into the anatomy of the maxilla the palate is mainly formed by the palatine process of maxilla fusion of the palatine process of maxillae and horizontal plates of the palatine bone and the premaxilla so these bones form a strong suture along the midline of the palate and our expansion process should aim at opening up of this suture thereby leading to expansion of dental arches apart from the attachment of or the formation of suture along the midline the maxilla the maxilla is attached by various sutures to the craniofacial skeleton so the expansion has its effects not only on the mid palatine suture which is formed by horizontal plate of the palatine bone and palatine process of the maxilla but it also has its effect on the circummaxillary sutures just keep this critical point in mind as the age of an individual advances the sutures will become more ossified and more interdigitated as you see in the uh, lowermost right image in this uh, slide the sutures in a younger individual are less serrations are and less interdigitated and so we can easily open up the sutures when the patient or individual is uh, young at an early developing age group as the age of the individual advances the sutures become more uh, more and more uh, ossified and with more and more serrations leading to a compact increased compactness which is very much difficult to be split by means of expansion so keeping this critical point in view expansion should be carried out as early in the age of an individual as possible preferably during the growth period of the individual before 15 years of age so that you can successfully split the mid palatine suture and also you can have a less resistance offered by the sutures that are giving attachment to the maxillae thereby a successful expansion can be achieved if you are carrying out this procedure in a growing individual preferably before 15 years of age now when you are speaking about expansion we need to understand that the expansion can be classified into slow expansion and rapid expansion depending upon the speed of expansion and there is one more entity called a surgically assisted expansion it is also a part of rapid maxillary expansion usually we call it as surgically assisted rapid maxillary expansion sarmi or surgically assisted rapid palatal expansion okay here the rate of expansion varies in slow expansion the expansion is very slow whereas in rapid expansion the expansion process is fast and even the appliances which we use for this specific types of expansions are also different for slow expansion usually we will go for either quad helix or coffin spring or w arch or a split acrylic plate with a jack screw whereas for rapid maxillary expansion we can go for a isaacson type of expander or a hyrax appliance now 
according to the modality of employed that means when we try to expand the jaw it might be a skeletal expansion or a dental expansion usually as the age of an individual advances that is as elder as an individual is the expansion achieved will be more of a dental type rather than a skeletal type this is called as orthodontic expansion whereas in a growing individual when you try to expand the jaw we can achieve an orthopedic or skeletal effect or skeletal expansion by splitting of the mid parallel suture this is called as orthopedic expansion so we have a slow expansion and rapid expansion and similarly we have an orthodontic expansion and rapid max uh, sorry orthodontic and orthopedic type of expansions apart from classification of expansion process we have a classification system of appliances that are used for expansion removable appliances and fixed appliances the removable expansion appliances are active plates that is split acrylic plate with a jack screw and functional appliances whereas fixed appliances can be further classified into tooth bond and tissue bond tooth bond appliances are mini expander whereas tooth and tissue bond appliances are derish villa type and hus type of appliance just uh, note down the classification system removable appliances fixed appliances fixed appliances are again classified into tooth bond and tooth and tissue bond tooth bond is a mini expander whereas tooth and tissue bond is a derish villa type and hus type of appliance this is a split acrylic plate in the jack screw by sequential activation of the jack screw the acrylic plate which is split into two portion will be moving outward thereby pushing the maxillary teeth apart most of the times the expansion that is achieved with the split acrylic plate is a dental type not a skeletal type this is a split acrylic plate with the coffin spring this is also activated by uh, opening up of the omega spring or a coffin spring that is placed in the middle of the expansion plate these are the fixed expansion appliances hans type derish villa type and a saxon type you can just have a look at them wherein they are uh, supported by the teeth in the posterior segment and uh, tissues in the posterior segment in case of uh, hans type of appliance so by and these appliances have a screw in the midline by sequential a program the activation of the screw we can cause expansion of the dental arches and this is a hyrax appliance which is most commonly used appliance for expansion where we will band first premolars and first permanent molars and the hyrax appliance will be soldered to these bands and cemented in the patient's mouth and activated in a sequential manner to expand the maxilla let us first discuss about rapid maxillary expansion so the rapid maxillary expansion is indicated in cases of severe narrowing of the arches and usually either it be a unilateral or bilateral narrowing we need, we, have, we will go for rapid maxillary expansion in some cases of mandibular prognathism where there is a reduced development of the maxillary base reduced anterior development of the maxillary base then we will go for uh, expansion a rapid kind of maxillary expansion in cases where the palate is steep and there is a deviated septum and the nasal obstruction due to enlarged adenoids in order to increase the nasal capacity we will go for expansion of maxillary arch usually expansion of maxillary arch was introduced as a method as a process in uh, otor otorhinolaryngology to increase the nasal capacity because the expansion of the maxillary arch increases the volume or capacity of the uh, no, uh, nasal airway thereby the breathing problems that are associated with the patient will be reduced so this is the Uh, th that's why the maxillary expansion is indicated even in case where there is a subtle deviation with a marked constriction of the nasal airway due to enlarged adenoids in cleft palate cases also we, we will go for expansion of the maxillary arch because in the cleft cases the maxillary arch will be collapsed with a severe narrowing and severe cross bite 
and expansion can also be done in cases where we require some amount of space in order to decrowd the dentition. As I told you before, the methods of gaining the space or obtaining the space for correction of malocclusion in orthodontics are proximal stripping, extractions and expansions. So expansion can be used as a method of obtaining a space to reduce crowding and proclination in malocclusion cases. One mm of expansion is supposed to be a, uh, useful in achieving about 0.7 mm of increase in the arch perimeter. That means if we expand a dental arch by 1 mm, we will obtain a space of 0.7 mm in the dental arch. So if you expand 5 mm, we will get 4.5 mm of space. So this space that is obtained by expansion of the dental arch can be utilized for correction of a malocclusion, either it be a crowding or propination. So these are the indications of rapid maxillary expansion. Now, what are the contraindications? In the patients who are uncooperative, we can't go for rapid maxillary expansion. In the patients with anterior open bites, the bite will become still, st the, the mandibular plane will become still steeper or the uh, steepness of the mandibular plane angle will be increased with maxillary expansion. So in a patients who are already having a vertical growth pattern, it is usually uh, better to avoid rapid maxillary expansion or we can go for a modified form of hyrax appliance called as bonded hyrax rather than banded hyrax for expansion in cases having a vertical growth pattern with a high mandibular plane angle. Now, a periodontally weak dentition cannot be subjected to rapid maxillary expansion because rapid maxillary expansion uh, lays more load on the periodontium. When we do this in a periodontally weak patients, then they will be subjected to still more forces leading to still progression of the periodontal destruction. Now, after ossification of mid palatal suture, we can't go for expansion by uh, this method because rapid maxillary expansion is mainly aimed at opening up of the mid parallel suture but once the mid parallel suture is completely ossified rapid maxillary expansion does not serve the purpose rather the expansion that is achieved will be a dental one not a skeletal one so these are the contraindications of rapid maxillary expansion so, when we look into the rapid maxillary expansion, it is an orthopedic expansion and the force levels are 10 to 20 pounds per day. Okay. And the, act, the total process of expansion will be completed within a period of 2 to 4 weeks depending upon the amount of expansion that is needed in that particular individual. And we can achieve an expansion of 0.2 to 0.5 mm per day with rapid maxillary expansion. So, the expansion force is 10 to 20 pounds per day, an orthopedic type of expansion and the speculated expansion will be completed within a period of 2 to 4 weeks that is very early and 0.2 to 0.5 mm of expansion can be achieved per day with a rapid maxillary expansion. Before uh, instituting a rapid maxillary expansion, uh, our treatment plan should have a, a good supplementation of diagnostic aids. So the diagnostic aids that are mainly used uh, before rapid maxillary expansion to finalize the plan of expansion is posterior anterior cephalogram and the occlusion radiogram. The posterior anterior cephalogram gives you an estimate of the cross bite that is present and the occlusion radiograph will give you an information regarding the ossification of the mid palatal suture. So these two are the important diagnostic aids before the treatment during the treatment to evaluate the effect of the rapid maxillary expansion and also the post treatment also. So the main radiographs or the main diagnostic aids that are essential when we are going for rapid maxillary expansion are occlusal radiograph of the maxilla and posterior anterior cephalogram. Now once we fix a hyrax screw which is usually mainly used for rapid maxillary expansion so the hyrax is mainly used for rapid maxillary expansion exclusively in many cases. So once we fix a uh, expansion screw, there is a protocol that is to be followed to activate the appliance. 
You can't activate the appliance haphazardly. A strict protocol has to be followed in order to achieve a successful expansion. Now, let us look into the uh, expansion protocol. According to TIMS, so the expansion protocol, different expansion protocol is given by different authors. We will discuss about TIMS schedule first. According to TIMS, in patients up to 15 years of age, 90 degrees rotation in the morning and 90 degrees rotation in the evening should be done. That means 180 degrees per day divided into 90 degrees in the morning and 90 degrees in the evening. Now in patients above 15 years of age, 45 degrees activation 4 times a day is required. Why? Because in a younger individual, the sutures will be easily yielding. Whereas in the elderly patients, the sutures will not yield that easily. So the concentration of the stress will lead to discomfort to the patient much. That is why the patient is younger, at a time we can activate much like 90 degree in the morning and 90 degree in the evening. Whereas when the patient is an adult patient where the sutures are already ossified, more stress concentration in the sutures will cause much discomfort and pain to the patient. So we have to go for activation of 40 degrees, uh, 40 degrees 4 times divided in a day. When we look into the another protocol proposed by Zimmering and Isaacson, when a young or growing patient, two turns each day for the first four to five days. Remember, one turn is equal to 90 degree. So, 90 degree plus 90 degree, 180 degree per day for first four to five days, and then one turn each day for the rest of the RMA treatment. So, 90 degree plus 90 degree, 180 degree per day for four to five days. And then 90 degree per day for the rest of the RMA treatment, that is for the rest of the treatment period. Whereas in adult patients, we have to go for two turns each day for the first two days, and one turn each day for the next five to seven days, and thereafter one turn per alternate day is given in an adult patient. This is the Zimring and Isaacson protocol of rapid maxillary expansion. Now what is the design of the expansion screw? An expansion screw has an oblong body divided into two halves. Each half shows threaded inner side and double-ended screw extends on each side in, uh, into each half of the oblong body and a central bossing with four holes. The holes receive a key to turn the screw and 90 degree turn gives an uh, expansion of 0.18 mm. And the pattern of threading on each side is opposite to each other. So this is the design of the expansion screw. And the hyrax key, hyrax key once uh, uh, this hyrax key is inserted into the hole that is present to the oblong body, and 90 degree rotation of the hole is called as one, uh, 90 degree rotation is called as one turn, which will give a space of 0.18 mm, or which will expand by 0.18 mm. Now, when you are doing a rapid maxillary expansion for a patient, you should instruct a good oral hygiene protocol for the patient. And you should avoid the orthodontic movement of anchor teeth because here by rapid expansion, we are mainly aiming at orthopedic, orthopedic correction or orthopedic expansion, not an orthodontic one. So as far as possible, the anchorage that you take should be very stiff so that it will not allow the movement of the and the patient should be sufficiently trained to use the key. Sometimes the patient will swallow the key and it will lead to a complication of pulmonary system. Okay, so take care and instruct the patient to tie a thread to the key and tie the thread around the finger and activate it so that accidentally if it slips also because of the thread that is uh, because of the key is threaded the patient can easily Redrive the key even it falls down into the oral cavity. So, the usage of the key should be clearly explained to the patient. Now, regularly we should evaluate the maxillary occlusal radiograph to see the opening up of the mid palatal suture as a change in response to the rapid maxillary expansion. Now, the patient should be cautioned about the dizziness, pressure in the area of nasal bridge and under the eyes blanching of the tissues under the eyes as a result of expansion. So the patient should be clearly instructed that these things are going to happen in an expansion process 
and you should not feel worried about these things. You should priorly inform the patient so that the patient will not be apprehensive and uh, the treatment process go in a smooth manner without any conflicts between the patient and the clinician. So these are the clinical tips when you are planning for a rapid maxillary expansion procedure. Now, in response to the rapid maxillary expansion, what are the effects in different structures of the craniofacial skeleton? Let us look into those things. In the bones, the basal and alveolar bones, we can see bending of the alveolar bone and splitting of the mid parallel suture of the maxilla and pressure in the circummaxillary sutures also. And we can also see change in the inclination of the maxillary teeth which are used as anchor units as a result of uh, alveolar bone bending due to rapid maxillary expansion. And the nasal capacity is also increased and the maxillary, uh, the mid parietal suture particularly opens in a fan shaped pattern. When you look anterior posteriorly, the opening will be more in the anterior region and less as it extends posteriorly in the form of a fan. Whereas, when you see in an occlusal view, the opening will be more on the oral side and less on the nasal side in a fan shaped pattern. Okay? Can, uh, we can appreciate in the image the opening as indicated uh, when you see it in a sagittal view and when you see it in a frontal view. A fan shaped opening of the mid parietal suture happens. An occurrence of a Midline diastema is an indication of expansion and tell the patient that the midline diastema is not going to create a problem rather it, it can be uh, as early as possible it will be getting closed by mesial inclination of the crowns of the maxillary incisors due to the pull of transeptal fibers and this abnormal angulation of the incisors can be later corrected by fixed orthodontics. So the reaction to expansion is stress in the sutures, pressure in the bones, opening up of the mid parallel suture in the form of a fan, more opening anteriorly and less opening posteriorly, more opening on the oral side and less opening on the nasal side, and alveolar bone bending and change in the inclination of the teeth that are used as anchors for rapid maxillary expansion. Now, once the expansion process is complete, the same appliance should be. Uh, you know, the screws should be, uh, uh, the composite should be placed on the screws so that they won't unwind, they, they won't go back, which will lead to relapse. So, the same appliance should be left in place as a retention appliance by deactivating the screw. And this should be kept in place for a period of 3 to 6 months, they say, to prevent relapse. So the expansion screw that is used for expansion should be used in a deactivated mode as a retentive appliance for about 3 to 6 months to prevent relapse of expansion. Remember, expansion cases are more prone for relapse because we are actually disturbing the neuromuscular balance. So we are pulling the maxillary uh, halves uh, towards the buccal side where a strong muscle that is buccinator is present which will constantly tend to push the expanded or uh, uh, laterally uh, expanded uh, portions of the maxilla to go back into their optim uh, normal or pre-treated position. So prevent, to prevent this uh, relapse tendency and to provide sufficient time for the neuromusculature to adapt to expanded maxilla, we need to use the appliance that is used for treatment as a, re as a retention appliance by deactivating the appliance or uh, in a deactivated mode. Just we will place the composite on the screws to prevent their unwinding. Okay. So that was about rapid maxillary expansion. When we look into the slow maxillary expansion, here the pressure is 2 to 4 pounds only, very less when compared to 20 to 40 pounds in case of sorry, 10 to 20 pounds in case of rapid maxillary expansion. Okay. Now even the expansion achieved is very minimal, 0.5 to 1 mm per week. And the total treatment time that that uh, that is utilized is more. That is two to four months. But what they say is slow expansion has a good stability and less potential for relapse because in between the activations we have uh, the tissues have sufficient time to accommodate 
or to you know to remodel and adapt themselves to a new position of the teeth and the maxillary uh, maxillary halves that's why the stability is more with slow expansion but the time period of treatment is more less amount of skeletal expansion okay and more time more time taking procedure but the forces are low stability is more with slow maxillary expansion you can go for slow maxillary expansion using jack screws that is fitted in the midline of a split acrylic plate this produces a dental expansion not a skeletal expansion and even we can incorporate a coffin spring in the mid midline of the split acrylic plate by activation of this coffin spring but by, by opening up of the coffin spring and replacing it back in place in the maxillary arch it causes expansion of the maxillary arch even we can use a fixed type of uh, slow maxillary expander that is called as double watch watch helix appliance by opening up of the loops or giving a v bends in the anterior bridge and the posterior arms of the quad helix we can activate the quad helix appliance it's a fixed appliance that cause expansion so the uh, the appliances which are used as a fixed type for slow maxillary expansion are supposed to cause even some amount of alveolar bone bending also but it's very difficult for opening up of the suture with these appliances okay now apart from these appliances like hair axe split split acrylic plate with the uh, jack screw okay the coffin spring quad helix w arch we also have some newer appliances that are used for expansion let us just enumerate those appliances we have something called as nickel titanium arch expanders that can be used in the maxillary arch as a fixed appliance we can also use functional appliances wherein we can uh, eliminate the effect of buccal musculature on the maxillary arch thereby uh, tongue directed normal development of maxillary arch will happen thereby expanding the maxillary arch i mean we can use uh, repelling magnets in the midline between the acrylic plates which causes uh, expansion of the dental arch by force of repelling between the two magnets and even for minor expansion particularly in the region of first permanent molar we can go for transparental arch and surgically assisted expansion in adult patients where there is a severe constriction of the maxillary arch we need to have a skeletal effect but as the sutures are ossified we can't produce skeletal effect so what we do is we will relieve the maxilla surgically of its sutural attachments and we will use a hair axe appliance to expand the arch this is called as surgically assisted rapid maxillary expansion this is a nite expander which is a nickel titanium uh, expander used to expand the maxillary arch these are the functional appliances they are keeping the dental arches away from the buccal musculature thereby tongue force will push the dental arches maxillary dental arch away outward thereby normal transverse development of the maxilla and its dentition happens with functional appliances and two repelling magnets of samarium cobalt placed in the Uh, split acrylic plate on either plate thereby the repelling forces will cause expansion of the arch and even transparental arch but but the expansion with the transparental arch is very very minimal 1 to 2 mm of expansion particularly in the region of first permanent molar can be achieved like single tooth cross bites of molar we can use this appliance now let us look into the differences between slow and rapid expansion slow expansion gives orthodontic effect rapid expansion gives orthopedic effect slow expansion the force is very light whereas rapid expansion the force is more and the slow expansion produces dental dental expansion whereas rapid expansion produces skeletal as well as dental expansion the results with slow expansion are stable with the rapid expansion the relapse tendency is more because it doesn't have sufficient time for the uh, adjacent tissues to adapt to the newly expanded maxilla and the time period of treatment is 2 to 4 months for slow expansion whereas it's only 1 month maximum 1 month rapid maxillary expansion is completed and uh, the arch perimeter changes are lesser with slow expansion but more with uh, uh, rapid expansion the intercanine width 0.6 times the posterior expansion whereas with the rapid expansion it is 0.65 times that is there is no much change in the intercanine width either with the slow expansion or rapid expansion mandibular rotation is nil in slow expansion whereas there is a strong tendency of the mandible to rotate in a downward and backward direction and increase in the anterior facial height with the 
rapid maxillary expansion. So less changes in the slow maxillary expansion, whereas significant increase in the A and B or class 2 tendency is significant in cases undergoing rapid maxillary expansion because of downward and backward rotation of mandible. So these are the main differences between slow and rapid maxillary expansion and you can make a note of it. Now, what is surgical assisted maxillary expansion? As I told you, in an adult patient where the sutures are completely ossified, it is very difficult to skeletally expand the maxilla. But yet, in some cases where there is a severe narrowing of the maxillary arch, in order to skeletally expand the maxillary arch, it has to be uh, relieved or freed of the, its sutural attachments to the circummaxillary sutures. Then we can go for expansion with a rapid maxillary expansion appliance. This is called as Circum, uh, surgically assisted rapid maxillary expansion or surgically assisted rapid palatal expansion. So, whether it's a slow expansion or rapid expansion, proper diagnosis and proper appliance should be used with every care and proper instructions to the patient and a standardized protocol of expansion should be followed in any case of expansion. So, proper diagnosis proper appliance design and proper appliance activation protocol should be followed in each and every patient whether it be a slow expansion or a rapid expansion judiciously. Hope you all understood about the uh, lecture on the expansion and in our upcoming classes we will come up with some more important topics in orthodontics. Thank you.